We welcome Jeff Cameron from War Chant, the best Florida State coverage anywhere. And Jeff was in Charlotte. He's back in Tallahassee now. And quite a bit has transpired since Florida State won the ACC title. And now, Jeff, what was what was going through your mind as the committee's selections were being revealed? Well, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I did not think uh, that in reality, Florida State would be left out of uh, the, the college football playoff. I thought, uh, you know, like a lot of people, I've watched the show. I've watched what the committee does over the years. And for the most part, while there is drama and it's made for TV and it's a lot of fun and all the talking heads go back and forth with their opinions about which team is better than this team. And if there's an appreciable difference between the third and the fifth and the seventh, at the end of the day, we both know that an undefeated Power 5 conference champion, uh, especially with Florida State's resume, they've beaten eight bowl teams this year, mm -hmm. two SEC teams. It wasn't as if this was a weak campaign by Florida State. Road win against Clemson and you know a number of other uh, moments throughout the year that let you believe that Florida State certainly is one of the tip, top four teams. I thought for sure that they would get in. So when Texas got moved to three, it was the first indicator. In fact, it, when I saw that, I thought, they're going to do it. They're going to screw them. And, and then it happened. So Mike Norvell releases a statement, says, I'm disgusted, infuriated with the committee's decision today have to have what was earned on the field taken away because a small group of people decided they knew better than the results of the games. And he goes on the Orange Bowl teleconference, you know, says out of respect for the Orange Bowl, I'm not going to, to yeah. get back into that. You saw the statement. But privately, for, for Mike Norvell, for Michael Alford, the AD, uh, for the president, Richard McCullough, what, what is the mood there? What, what are they saying behind closed doors? Well, they're obviously very angry. There are lasting repercussions to this move. Obviously, you look at the financials. Florida State is devastated by this. I think also you hit the nail on the head. I think Mike's devastated for his players. They did everything that was asked of them this year. Every time they had to meet a challenge, especially in the wake of injury after injury after injury, they kept finding ways to win. We always talk about Andy football being the ultimate team game. You get proof of that when things like injuries happen. Are you able to overcome? Are you able to galvanize, to gather, and find a way to lean on other aspects of your football team in order to get a win? And they did that on the road in the swamp. And this is not a banner year for Florida. In some ways, you could say the SEC let Florida State down. If LSU had been better after Florida State beat LSU, if Florida hadn't stunk, maybe Florida State would look a little bit better in the eyes of the committee. But the SEC let them down. And this isn't the year to ride and die with the SEC if you're the committee. Uh, the ACC had a better record against the SEC. The SEC out of conference was not impressive, as you well know. This yep. wasn't the time to set precedent. Yep. What you can see now, though, is college football playoff tickets on game time. That's right. Rose Bowl matchup is set. Michigan-Alabama. Sugar Bowl matchup is set. Texas and Washington. I had a friend text me right after the announcements were made. This is someone who, who lives in Louisiana said, Texas fans are hammering the Sugar Bowl. They are coming. They also may be getting some national title game tickets in Houston because yeah, who knows? One win away at this point. But if you would like to attend the Sugar Bowl or the Rose Bowl, you can get your tickets on Game Time. Download the Game Time app, use the code STAPLES, and you'll get $20 off your first purchase. There are tickets right now for the Rose and for the Sugar. So you want to go to the Sugar? Sugar's actually a little more than the Rose right now. So this, this might be the time to get in on the Rose Bowl. But you look at all the tickets that are available, you see a photo of the stadium, you click it, that is your vantage point from your seat. So you know exactly what you're looking at. You know exactly what you're getting. A couple more taps, the ticket is yours. So download that Game Time app, use the code STAPLES, and you will get $20 off your first purchase. We talked about this on the, on the show the other night because somebody asked what was the SEC's best non-conference win, and I guessed Missouri over K-State. I think I, I think I was wrong on that. I think it was Kentucky over Louisville, but that's a very different answer than than you give in most years so yeah. you're, you're absolutely right about that I, I go back to the the part about Mike Norvell and what he tells his team that that seems to be the most heartbreaking part of this for me you know you see the Jordan Travis tweet and, and you think about think about where this program was three years ago yeah. and where they've come 
And to just have it yanked out from underneath you like that, I just don't see – it doesn't feel like there's anything they can even do about it. There isn't anything they can do about it, and I think that leads to that feeling of being bereft of hope, Andy. I mean, how – how must that feel? I, I, I do feel terrible for the kids, for all the frustration that Florida State fans feel right now. And believe me, it is loud and clear how angry they are, whether it be with the College Football Playoff Committee, whether it's ESPN, whether it's Kirk Herbstreet, who went to stumping for uh, this very result to happen weeks ago. Um, all of these things have frustrated Florida State fans. But the truth is, they have to feel sick to their stomachs for the players. It's about the players and the coaches who've worked so very hard to come back from three and six, five and seven, and get to a place where you win 10 games a year ago and you go into this season with high expectations. And then you meet all of those expectations, beginning with the big win to start the year in Orlando against LSU. And so I think that they feel cheated for those guys, especially because, again, it wasn't an easy road. Florida State's had to overcome an awful lot this year due to injury, but they did, and they played those games, and they won every last one of them. They didn't stumble. They didn't lose at home by double digits. They didn't, you know, have a game where during an off day, somebody snuck up and got them. They always found a way. You look around the country, it's hard to go undefeated. So I think they have to feel absolutely cheated with no recourse. Well, and the other thing that, the one that, that would stick with me, I think, if I were them, is when Boo Korg and the NC State AD got asked about Liberty. And why did Liberty get in over SMU, which had two losses to two Power Five teams and then won the American? And Boo Corgan said, well, they just kept winning. <laughs> that That's the part. And I think that's the part that infuriates most people. Because I, I, I'm of the mind that you can be excited to see a Michigan-Alabama Rose sure. Bowl. Absolutely. But also feel devastated for Florida State's players and coaches. But that part of it, where it matters in this particular case, but not in this particular case, feels like the most infuriating part of it. Well, it's what you need to do in order to make the argument in the moment with the question that you're asked. And you can handpick, cherry pick narratives all you want. We watch this happen week to week all the time. We both know, Andy, this is a flawed system. It's on the back of other flawed systems in college football uh, for many years now. And this was coming. You know, the fact that they didn't expand to 12 led you to think eventually something like this would happen. It just so happened that it, it occurred the final year of the 14 playoff. And the irony, of course, is that Jim Phillips uh, was part of the problem, uh, the ACC commissioner, and not getting this thing expanded. Not solely the problem, but part of it. Right. So you get to a place where the vitriol and anger that Florida State fans and administrators and coaches and players must feel within the ACC, and especially to hear an answer like that, by the way, and you wonder how if you chair a committee and you are – athletic director in the ACC, the second you realize that they are efforting to make this move, an unprecedented move, to have Alabama get into the playoff over Florida State, you got to almost get up and recuse, recuse yourself and say, I won't be a part of this. I, I'm not going to do it, and I, I'm going to walk away and make a public announcement about it. But he didn't do that. Of course he didn't. And I think most Florida State fans would tell you they wanted out of the ACC a long time ago, not just fans. Obviously, the administration did. If you don't think they want out now more than ever before, it's 100% certain. I think, if anything, it's a galvanizing effect to try to do whatever you have to do to come together. Sort of an us-against-the-world mentality is what they'll have now. One thing I thought was interesting, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you saw the SEC folks kind of planting the seeds of, oh, yeah. well, if this happens, if they, because they're experienced at it. They've dealt with this multiple times before. They understand how the process works. The ACC was not proactive at all. They were completely reactive. The first quote you saw from Jim Phillips on the subject was on Sunday, whereas Greg Sankey was talking to anyone who would listen Saturday about Alabama and Georgia trying to get both of them in if Alabama won. So that that's another part of it is a it is a, a leadership thing too, but it's also a name brand type thing. This that's the part I wonder because we we see we say it's an SEC thing. I think it may be more of a of a name brand thing. Like if let's say this had been Missouri in the same boat, or, or well, I'll say Ole Miss. We'll say an SEC West team. If it had been Ole Miss that had beaten Alabama, that had gone 12 and 1, that had lost to Texas, that had beaten Georgia, and Florida State's 13 and 0, I think Florida State gets in. Yes, and I, think I think that's absolutely true, Andy. And that's what's yep. infuriating because that proves that it's arbitrary. Right. And that 
is really, really frustrating. I think if you put it, just, just reverse it. Say Florida State had, there's no way they would have left Alabama out if, if they were in Florida State shoes. Correct. Florida State in Alabama shoes. There's no way. But Florida State is one of the biggest brands in college football, bar none. If you're really going to do the argument about who brings more to the table for a national ratings standpoint, if we're talking about eyes on sets for the college football playoff, Florida State is a vastly superior brand. And I'm not saying that to knock this team, this program, their fans at all. I actually like them. But Florida State is a vastly superior brand nationally than Washington. So if you're going to leave out an undefeated Power Five conference champion, why not make it Washington? They played six straight weeks of pretty average to poor football, looking like they were banged up. Then they beat Oregon. Good on you. They did what they had to do. They had to win that game. Or state fans are saying the same thing today. Well, it, it, we've seen Florida politicians from the governor down to the state legislature. Chip Lamarca, who, uh, if you follow college sports very closely, you know he was very involved in the NIL bill in Florida. Uh, it was the first effective one that essentially created the NIL system that you know now. He said something. But what what could they even do at this point other than yell about it? It's all they can do. And it's you, you put it in a box, Andy. You, you, if you come out and you huff and you puff and you scream and you point to the injustice and you say it's unfair and, and you bleed for the players, that's fine. If you keep doing it. You look like you're whining. You get accused of crying. You get, you know, all of these things. It's very unfortunate. They have no recourse that I'm aware of. What are you going to sue? I don't think so. I think, you know, there's a thought. Do you boycott the bowl? Do you not go? Well, they're not going to do that. Their motto all year long, Andy, has been finish. Finish mm -hmm. the play, finish the game. And unfortunately for them, they did, and it got them nothing. So it's very frustrating, but they're not going to, if that's your motto, decide to sit it out. And the problem is, you know, if you're the Orange Bowl, I have a hard time weeping for the Orange Bowl committee or any other bowl committee for that matter. They make a lot of money and do very little. But that said, they've got to be furious. Think about oh, yeah. the Orange Bowl. How Georgia doesn't want to be there either. Yeah. Nobody wants to be there. None of the fans for either fan base care about going to that game at all. And all the star players are going to opt out. You're yeah. going to have a nothing game. Well, and that that ultimately, I think, is the reason why it got pushed to 12, really, more than the competitive aspect of it is it would make sure people kept playing and, and, and games like that would matter to someone. I want to go back to the conference affiliation part of it because we know what Florida state was saying in August and, and very boldly, more boldly than anybody else. We know Clemson feels the same way. We know, we know North Carolina feels the same way, but they're afraid to say it out loud. Like Florida right. state is right. What does this change that? Or does this just push them harder to keep trying to do what they were already trying to do. This particular, this particular committee just told you, you don't matter. That the ACC doesn't matter. Your winning record against the SEC this year, be damned. Your undefeated Power 5 champion with that schedule, as I said, wins over eight bowl teams and two SEC teams, doesn't matter. You further have confirmation that unless you're in the Big Ten or the SEC, you don't matter and you're left to the whims of a committee, any particular committee, it changes every year, so who knows? Maybe you curry favor that particular year. You would think if an ACC guy is leading the way that you would have had a, a little bit more pull, but, but alas, you don't. So I think, honestly, it further affirms that you have to leave as soon as you possibly can. And that involves finances, that involves legalities, that involves a lot of stuff. We both know you and I have had this conversation many times, but I would think this even further emboldens Florida State to get out. Uh, you, you have to find a way. You have to find a way because this has long-term repercussions. You can look at recruiting impact. You can look at financial impact. You can look at a lot of aspects of this. And I know next year you could say, well, it wouldn't happen next year. Yeah, of course not. It wouldn't happen next year. Florida State would be in. If they had lost last night, they would have been in. Um, but, but, but again, uh, I do think losing out on the money here and knowing the way that committees and, of course, ESPN and others feel about the ACC, You've got to find a way to get where the getting's good, where the money's better and the opportunities abound. Well, the recruiting piece of it too. I, I this this is a, a tough one for Florida State that has to recruit against a ton of SEC schools. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, I know what their coaches are saying today. Because Absolutely. remember, tomorrow everybody's gonna jump in the portal, and then signing day is next week. So this is right now 
the portal guys and the final push, you're going to have these coaches all saying, well, you can get to the playoff easier from our league and not from their league. Yeah, and you know the counter for Florida State's coaches is that well, it wouldn't happen next year. We're in no matter what. But right. but I, I get it. You're right. That's exactly what they're going to say. And not every kid is savvy enough to know the difference. And so they're going to hear that and think, well, God, I did just watch Florida State go 13 and 0 and absolutely not go to the playoff. Sure, uh, you're you're right. Uh, they'll use it. I mean, I think Florida State can counter it. But yeah, you know, I, I do. I feel bad for Mike. I feel bad for the players. I I really want to keep reiterating that I'm a big college football fan. I'd like to think. Now, nobody is completely objective. There is nobody on earth who is. We're all from nope. somewhere. We all went to school somewhere. Uh, we live in a certain region of the country. We have friends that went to school certain places. So none of us are purely objective. But I like to think, Andy, and you've known me over the years, no matter my affiliation or alliance, I try to be objective. And I think all of us want to do that because we love the bigger game, the game mm -hmm. of college football we absolutely love. And I think college football took a hit with this decision. I think some of uh, the integrity of the game can be called into question. When you start saying the games don't matter and that going undefeated could be trumped by a one loss team, a team who, by the way, struggled mightily with USF won on a miracle against a terrible Auburn team. This isn't, this isn't banner Georgia. I mean, they have a better win than you because they beat Georgia. But by the way, if we're going to be consistent, why did Florida state end up five? Why aren't they behind Georgia? George, it, it, George's got one loss. Just put them ahead of Florida State if you think the league is better. Hell, while you're at it, just put Oregon State, Oregon in front of uh, Florida State. Just say, well, listen, I know they have two losses, but they're the same team. Quite frankly, I think Oregon would beat Florida State, so let's just put Oregon in there. And if we're not done, let's just go on down the list and name seven, eight, nine teams you think you should put ahead of Florida State because God knows the games don't matter. It's about the eye test. It's about what Vegas would have you favored on a neutral field. Jeff, I think you just spoke for a whole lot of people. So I, I'm, I'm glad I, I, cause I think that that population's voice needs to be heard today. Like that, everything you said is true and correct. And everybody who's mad has every right to be mad. Like, again, you can be excited about what the playoff is going to be, what the two matchups are. You can still be mad about this. And if you're a Florida state fan, you should be mad about everything. So thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Good to be with you, Andy. Be well, man. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.